you get another one? Yeah, I got this at the aquarium. <sighs> There's an aquarium like an hour from us that has two hippos, and we went a few weeks ago. So, of course, I had to buy all the hippo merchandise. I have I have a hippo mug. It has the hippos on it. Their names are Jenny and Button. And I told you about the hippo snout painting. And then I got a stuffed hippo. When you die, Dan is just going to have to like get an extra large size coffin and just fill it with all the hippo stuff, like like some sort of old Egyptian thing, where they would bury you with your cats and your and your servants. Only with you, it's going to be burying you with all the hippo shit. That would be nice, actually. <laughs> we buried my dad with a uh, a little toy excavator. Yes, but there's a difference. He drove an excavator for years, and but, someone had given him a little toy one as a as like a funny present. So we buried it with him. But there's a difference between a little toy excavator and all the hippo stuff you have. Yeah, but they're cute <laughs> and also incredibly lethal. You have yet to see Okja, I take. Yes, I haven't seen it yet. I I, I, I expect many people told you to watch it. Many people have. I have not gotten around to watching it yet. But you, and those of you at home, you should watch it. It's on the Netflix. It's really, really good. Are going to give me the big eyes till I give you treats? you just going to sit there and give me the big eyes? Uh, you yeah. got to bribe your cats, huh? you got to get up here because Peggy's going to eat them all. Peggy's going to eat them all if you don't come get them. Look, treats. Why do we do this? Why do we reason with them, Tara? I don't know. We, I do this with Grady, too. I'm like, Grady, no, you need to stop doing that. Like, if you tell them patiently and kindly, they'll understand. Right. If you explain to them why they're making a bad choice, <laughs> they, they still won't give a fuck. They still will not give anything resembling a fuck. Dottie has figured out how to open the kitchen cabinets. So we have one corner cabinet that has one of those in lazy Susans inside. Yeah. And we don't really use it that much because... We actually have more cabinet space than we can even really use, which is amazing. But um, so she's been hiding out in there. And it's cracking Dan up because, you know, Dottie's our hider. So I always go look for her and I'm like, do you want to come out? And she start he started like over my shoulder doing the mom from a Christmas story. <laughs> some milk. <laughs> and she tends to run and hide when Peggy's in trouble. <laughs> So he's going to kill him. Daddy's going to kill Peggy. <laughs> okay, you want to come out of there? No. Okay, you want some milk? So he's like, he, she's just embraced it. She's just going to hide in the kitchen cabinet now and just be Randy. And she does carry her food from the kitchen out into the living room. So I'm like, she even shows me how the piggies eat. And she picks up a mouthful of wet food and carries it all the way in the living room to eat it on the rug. I know, I don't. Why did we Just get these little. things? There's, there's Peggy eating all the treats. Why? Daddy, let's let's give some to Dottie since she's not going to come up since she's wise to my game here. Dottie's like, I know, no, I know what you're fucking doing. Because last time you held me up to that thing. I'm not falling for that shit again. You put the treats on the floor. Peggy is not the brains of the operation. No. All right, so it's another week. It's another bunch of awful, stupid shit. That's what we do. Awful, stupid shit is our oeuvre. <sighs> wow, I really gave you way too many treats. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, of course... The big news right now is still the hurricanes, plural, and the aftermath. What was that? Three hurricanes? Three. Three that hit, one that didn't hit. Yeah. And it's it's been, in every single way, just, I mean, Puerto Rico. Do I need to say anymore? Fucking Puerto Rico right now. Um, however, never underestimate our ability to take a bad situation and make it stupid. Um, let's get this over here on the screen. Hurricane victims call sex hotline 
after FEMA mistakenly treat, tweets the wrong number. Wow. I mean, the situation they're in is probably really frustrating. <laughs> so in its own way, <laughs> that might have been very helpful. Several Hurricane Irma victims called a 1-800 number for help and were offered phone, stack, phone sex instead of hurricane relief assistance. Miami Herald reported that the Federal Emergency Management Agency's Region 4 office accidentally tweeted the number Wednesday, which offered assistance to people dealing with damaged roofs. The number was supposed to be a 1-888 number, not a 1-800 number. Quote, welcome to America's hottest talk line. Guys, hot ladies are waiting to talk to you. Press 1 to connect free now, said the recording of the 1-800 number. Original tweet has since been deleted. Post the right number. I can only imagine that the phones that they had, you know, people are very stubborn about retail shit, even yeah. where they're in the wrong place. So I'm sure a lot of phone sex operators got yelled at. I, I would no, no. Uh, it's very kind of you to offer to put your mouth on my penis. But what I really need right now is help with my roof because there's going to be leaking and that's mold. Do you understand? <laughs> I can't get that out of there. So unless your mouth can get the mold, out of my insulation. I'm going to need to talk to your like, supervisor. The poor operator's like, is this a euphemism? <laughs> is this like a weird role play thing? Is this a new kink? I, I haven't. This, we, I don't. We I, didn't talk I, about this. <laughs> yeah, because people do get really fucking stubborn. When I worked at Old Navy, I had a woman argue with me for like 15 minutes over why I wouldn't let her into the GNC, which was still closed. <laughs> Because she left her keys there and she had to catch flight. I just need a minute. And I'm like, okay, I don't work there. I work here. I know, but I just need you to let me in for a minute. And I'm like, do you think I have the keys to every store in the mall? Because I, oh. I don't. They, I don't even have the keys to this store. And like, she was just arguing with me. Like, I just need five minutes. And I'm like, I appreciate your situation. You're going to have to see mall security. Like. People are fucking sick, man. I just, uh... Get, get, come on, man. I know there's no edit function on Twitter, but for fuck's sake, at least check what you're typing. Especially in a really, like, a, a legit emergency situation. Proof that shit. I mean, shit, I'm bitching about Star Trek on Twitter, and I make a typo, and I have a fucking panic attack. I mean, yes, technically you are offering a type of relief. <laughs> But probably not the type that's at the forefront of anybody's it's, mind right now. It's not going to be very helpful. FEMA blue They, want, they uh, want clean water and roofs. Tiger so says, was this a kind of Tiger says, was this a kinder way for FEMA to, help to, FEMA to tell people you're screwed? Oh. Yeah, you know, this, is the, this is the new Trump administration. Yeah. Fuck you. Well, another thing coming up is it's almost Halloween. It is. Which I'm by officially spreading over costumes as of today. Which, by the way, I want to remind everyone, it's also soon time for our Hooker Ween special. So send your submissions. You can tweet them at me, Nash076. You can also email them to me at request at radio.air.com. We are going to, as usual, be looking at the worst of sexy. Yandy is easy mode. We yeah. do like Yandy. Yeah. But I mean you can't go wrong with Yandy, but dig deep. Dig deep. Find find Dig us. deep, let's find us something fucking absurd. Yes. Especially and not just some shit some guy on the internet threw together. No, no. Find us something that some retail establishment deigned to sell right. to the public. That you can purchase. Yeah. Bring back sexy corn. No. But even with Halloween on the way, some people are getting the jump early and fucking it all up from Tennessee. Decapitated man Halloween display in Tennessee sparks 911 call. It's not even October yet. Can you see that fucking that fucking picture? Yeah, that looks really real. Local US police department has urged people not to call 911 after reports that a man had been crushed by a garage door. Supposed victim in Greene County, Tennessee, turned out to be a scarily realistic early Halloween decoration. Really early. 
The display provoked plaudits by the department's uh, Facebook page. Literally, congratulations to these people making something look so real. Someone else wrote, can you imagine how many break-ins it could prevent? Yeah, that's true. That's what I keep telling Dan about getting a pet hippo. I've negotiated also, down to a pet lynx, and he still won't go for it. Also not. This, this is one of those, what, you can't take a joke? Don't take this a joke. We just, it's fun. It's Halloween. You can't take Halloween? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with I can't say a lot because I feel like this is the kind of decoration that Dan might construct in our driveway now that we own a home. There were directions for like how to build a pallet and make it look like a hole in the ground that zombies were reaching out of. And he, I think he still has them like, but you know what you do? Number one, you wait till actually almost Halloween. Yeah. You don't do that shit in September. And another thing you do is you don't just leave that there by itself. Yeah. Context you matters. Like, you maybe put like another dummy in a Jason mask near it. Or or even just put a pumpkin next to it. Just a fucking pumpkin. Or like a sheet over a scarecrow. Yeah. Something. Something to give some indication that this is not actually a medical fucking emergency. Because you know what? You're driving down the street and you see that shit. Yeah. That looks a little realistic. And out of context. Yeah. And it's September. Yeah. You, and this, you were going, don't call 911 over this. How the fuck are they supposed to know not to call 911? You put yeah, it on I mean, your Facebook page. <laughs> we do a lot of people that are misusing 911. These people are not. No, they're, they're not. They're calling 911 because it looks like somebody's fucking dead. That's what you're, that's when you're supposed to call 911. Right. Like this is not a misuse of nine one one. It's an honest mistake. You got. You have to keep in mind when you are in a neighborhood, you are not alone there. Yeah. Other neighbors are going to see everything you put outside your house. They're going to judge you on it. They're going to judge you on the good things. They're going to judge you on the bad things. They're going to bitch if you don't mow your lawn. They're really going to bitch if you put a fucking headless corpse. One of my sisters. I won't tell you which one had her neighbor quietly approach her and let her know that they have very big kitchen windows and her husband should probably not get up and make the coffee naked every morning. Cause they're like, you have really big windows and we can all see him. <laughs> you gotta think about that stuff. Like there's a very big window here and like, Sometimes I'm just wandering through the house in my pajamas and what you can't see off camera is this is where my vanity is, where I do my hair and makeup. So if I'm looking for like a, a, a ponytail holder at three in the morning when I'm only wearing a t-shirt, I can't turn the light on because <laughs> there's a big window here that looks out on the street. I'm a big fan of blackout curtains. That's all I can say. Oh no, see, our our cats are angry enough at us that we have the windows closed and the AC on. If we actually close the blinds, there'd be a fucking uprising. That's that's not an option. But they don't have thumbs, Tara. They have claws. And they can they're really good at sleep deprivation. Like we would never sleep again. Oh, okay. They're cute little tyrants is what they are. Let, let, let's shift to, uh, to another thing. What, is, what is, would you say is the first prerequisite of being able to smuggle drugs? Having drugs? Okay, okay. I'll grant you that one. What comes after that? Having a plan? See, I would not go... go can, can, can we see inconspicuous? Show me inconspicuous. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's that's kind of the 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 very first thing you want to if you're thinking about smuggling anything, you want to keep off the radar. Yeah, you want to not get caught. Yeah, that didn't work so good. Bungling drug dealer Ebony Laren Holland Harris, four names, wow, used fake police lights to get to court. Okay. 
A woman arrested for using fake police lights to speed through traffic because she was running late for court has been jailed for over for her over $50,000 drug trafficking business. District Court has sentenced Ebony Alara Holland Harris to more than three years jail, deeming her trafficking op operation too serious for a suspended prison term. In sentencing, the judge said Holland Harris' downfall came because she needed a lift to court and chose her mode of transportation poorly. You were detected in a car which was driving down Main North Road, uh, Main North Road displaying flashing red and blue emergency lights that prompted a full search of the car. You were tra trafficking a significant quantity of harmful illicit drugs. All right. First of no, all... No, no, you skipped a part. You know, oh, which part? Police pulled the car over and noticed a samurai, samurai sword, sword protruding from the boot through the centerfold down seat in the rear of the vehicle. So... So... And let's see. the uh, Guys... I want everyone to picture in your mind what it, what a guy who has a samurai sword jury rigged in his car sticking through the trunk for a fast draw inside a fucking car would look like. Everybody yeah. picture in your mind. Okay? That's not a close quarters weapon. Is this your card? Is this is this what you were picturing? Is this your card? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Almost exactly. It's got to fucking wrap that's around. Not, like, I'm not a weaponry or martial arts expert, oh. but if I was thinking of a weapon I might want to use inside my vehicle, I would think of something that's less than three feet long. <laughs> that's just me. That's just, yeah. that's, that's, just, that's just me. <laughs> You're driving to court. You're already in trouble for this shit. Well, and why does this dude have fake emergency lights on his car? That's an excellent goddamn question. <laughs> why do you have those with your sword? Because... Are you Batman? Here's the thing about cops. They know who isn't a cop. Yes. If you have the flashing lights on your car and you're not a cop, the other cops are going to go, that's not a cop. If you have the flashing lights on your beat-up 96 Impreza. <laughs> They're going to know you're not one of them. Uh, you're not fooling. I, and guess what? You are later to court now. Gee, well, you've got an escort, probably. Uh, and three years. Three years in jail. That's, that's, not how you, that's not how you stay on the down low, lady. You are bad at this. Oh, we got more people who are bad at this. This is from Japan. Not to think that it's just America full of stupid people. No, no. The world is full of idiots. Oh, that was, was that, uh, where was this from? Now the chat is talking about what weapons are good to be in a car. You want a wakazashi. Switchblade, snub nose. Don't help, guys. Don't help. You're cool. Not to think well, that. Well, maybe you could understand that you're not John Wick. You're not. And that if you're in a knife fight inside your car, you're probably going to lose at least a finger. Not to, not to think that just us in the West here are complete imbeciles. There are idiots the world over. This one's from Japan. Japan na man nab for trying to steal car with cops inside. Oh, okay. Would be car thief in Japan has been nabbed after he tried to steal a vehicle with several police officers inside. I feel like you'd notice that. Yushio Sato, 23, was caught red handed trying to make off with the unmarked police car in his failed pre dawn heist. Uh, police spokeswoman uh, for the central city of N Numazu, I think that's how it said, she declined to give more details. <clears throat> How did you not notice? How did you, there? There are four. There were four people. There were four yeah, people. Like, even if they're not in uniforms, there's four people in that car. And he's there trying to just like pop the go inside. How do you not? Come on, man. That's because they have these these things that are see through on all four sides. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. It's it's like it's it's like fucking science fiction. I know. 
Like, did he think he would get to steal the cops too and like have his own personal army? Because that's not how that works. Like, that's not a finder's keeper situation. You got it. No, y'all work for me now. I found you. You got to check to see if someone's in the car before you steal it. That's just etiquette. Yeah. That's just polite. <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't steal the car with somebody in the car. That's I mean, my... you can because that's then carjacking. Yeah, but generally you want to not be outnumbered and or have a weapon <laughs> if you're going to jump up to carjacking because there's going to be a conflict and apparently they might have a sword. <laughs> so you want to be prepared for something like that. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh, you just, <laughs> how do you say fucking idiot in Japanese? Well, I know Baka, Baka is idiot. I don't know how to say fucking, Baka Yaru. Oh, we're learning things tonight. Yay. Baka Yaru is fucking idiot. You learned something useful for your travel. So if you go to Japan and someone goes, oh, Baka Yaru, you know what they think of you right away. Yeah. We're like a really vulgar Sesame Street. <laughs> We're learning together. Oh, okay. Now this, on any other week, this would probably be our last story, but it's not. Do you realize you've said that, like, all right, I was off for two weeks, but I feel like the last few times I've been on, you said that about the second to last story. I know. It's been, they've, we've had ties, man. We've had fucking yeah. ties. This one is from Ottawa. Oh, Canada. And one of the things that makes me sad is I can't get Kinder Eggs in America. I like Kinder Eggs. They're neat. They're little little candy. They're eggs. And you open it up and there's a toy inside. And it's awesome. I my, my Star Wars hippos that came out of Kinder Eggs that someone bought me on eBay. It's the entire original character cast of Star Wars on little Kinder Hippos. So, yeah, I, I I like them, but you can't get them in America, ostensibly no, because they're like a choking hazard or something. Right. And it sucks. So when I see someone in Canada who is blessed with Kinder Eggs and they do this. I am very sad. Do they put them up their butt? Ottawa jail catches drug smuggler with eight Kinder surprise eggs. I and was joking. Rectum. You were you were prescient. Nobody wants that candy now. Well, the candy's already gone. See here how, how the Kinder Egg works. Let's let's discuss the Kinder Egg. All the candy's on the outside. It's like a big chocolate egg. Oh. And when you take the egg apart, you know it's a hollow chocolate egg. That's when you get the little, the little inside capsule that has all the toy bits in it. And. But that's not just because you would think. But if he had the eggs up his butt, then that is the candy. Well, no, the story is wrong. The headline oh. is wrong. Okay. It was the inside bit. And yet still. What makes this story worse than someone just stuffing eight Kinder Egg butt things up their butt? Let, let me tell you what. Th there was a scheme here. There, there was a there was a scheme. Damian O'Reilly was actually pretty desperate to get inside the Ottawa Carlton Detention Center after hatching a drug smuggling plot. Oh, the writers are loving this. Hatching a drug smuggling plot that would see marijuana sold to inmates at 10 times its street value. All he had to do was find a crack. Oh, they're loving this. In the system, some <laughs> surefire way of getting arrested and jailed. And it had to be quick for O'Reilly. 20 had hooped. Not one, That's not two. Call it? That when you put something up your ass with the intent to smuggle it into or out of a jail, it's called hooping. Where did that term come from? You're learning tonight. We're all learning together in a horrible, horrible way. Had hooped not one, not two, but eight. Kinder Egg surprises f eggs filled with marijuana, tobacco, matches, and rolling papers before setting out to get arrested on June 9th, 
2016. So the first problem here is his idea was he was going to get arrested, get into jail, and sell shit to everybody. You... I mean, the downside is then you're in jail. Yes. And nobody has cash. Yes. They have so cigarettes. You're selling... Yeah, you're selling them for like chewing gum and cigarettes? Yes. Or I don't know what current jail currency is. Cell phone minutes? I don't know. You're You're not... Yeah. Oh... O'Reilly figured the quickest way to get arrested would be to throw a rock at a police cruiser in front of the courthouse, and sure enough, he got the job done in minutes flat. It helped that he was already on probation. Okay. So when he was arrested, he was held for bail and shipped off to the local inroads jail. That's where his plot unraveled. It's not known if the guard noticed O'Reilly was in some discomfort, but for whatever the reason, the guard had suspicions O'Reilly might be smuggling drugs. Inmate was escorted to dry cell number nine. A dry cell has no plumbing, and guards will either attempt to seize the contraband or wait for it to be expelled. In this case, it was O'Reilly himself who, once alone in the dry cell, removed eight Kinder Surprise eggs from his rectum. Guards had to then collect the eggs, photograph them, or carry them inside the Ottawa Police Drug Jail Safe Jail. <sighs> Look, I like money. I do. I like buying things. I like buying silly things like stuffed hippos and nail polish. I don't like money enough to shove things up my ass and then have to retrieve them later in jail. Will in the channel says, so what was this guy's exit strategy? I don't I don't, I don't like money that much. I don't like it. All right. Just, you know, I would think selling the shit you already have on the street, maybe it was worth 10 times less. But you know what else? You didn't have to put anything up your ass. Yeah. Or go to jail. Right. Because what? Because now you're not coming out again. No. What are you going to do with your money? You're not, there's no money. There's no There's freedom. No money. You're in jail. You violated your probation, so you're staying there. And you put things up your butt to do it. And you've got a and you've got a sore bum. You you what what is what the fuck were you thinking? This was a this was a poorly constructed plan. It's like one of those like just five seconds of thought would have been like, wait a minute, no. Also, like, I don't know if you've seen the movie Lucy, but if one of those things broke open and you got superpowers but also died in 24 hours, that would suck. Uh, you gotta be careful with shit. Even, uh, even the least of the things he put up there, raw tobacco, just imagine raw tobacco in your in, in your rectum. Just, I've never experienced raw tobacco anywhere in my person. Yeah, nicotine, tobacco. Well, there's a reason nicotine's an insecticide. Yeah. Uh, so, for the what could possibly top that? Well, this comes from uh, Kankakee, Illinois, which I I lived near relatively near to, passed it a few times in my life. Um, we got video. Holy free holy, do we have video. I'm just going to let you guys bask in this because it is amazing. Where is it? Here. Oh, the headline. Here we go. Brace yourselves. So you can see here, that is a bull fucking dozer. That is a bulldozer running over a cop car. That is a drunk 18 year old stealing a bulldozer and running over a cop. There are the cops chasing it. <laughs> On foot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> running after. <laughs> There's a dude on the back trying to climb onto it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> oh, video appears like a scene from Transformers. Really? This is a scene from Transformers? A bulldozer backs over a police squad car on a at Kankakee Street and then leads a cordon of cops on a low-speed chase. A <laughs> low-speed chase. Yeah. Never before seen police dash video. Uh, oh, they're like climbing it. That's so sad. I know. <laughs> From various angles. Um, obtained by uh, uh, ABC7 I-Team after a Freedom of Information Act filing. Police say 18-year-old Austin White of uh, Bourbonne? 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 Uh, Bourbonne? Bourbonne. I'm going to go with Bourbonne. It looks French has stolen the bulldozer from a Bradley construction site at 3 a.m. and began driving it around streets in nearby Kankakee. Clearly seen on one video when the, the bulldozer backs over a squad car when officer tries to stop him. The officer can be seen running from the squad uh, just as the car is being crushed by the bulldozer. Off-duty officer first reported seeing the bulldozer spinning around a Kankakee intersection. They're backing over so the... A cop tried to pull you over, and your response was to try and crush him? That's premeditated murder, young man. And then tried to run away. Only... Like, <clears throat> you just straight up tried to murder a cop. Welcome yeah. to the rest of your life in prison. They don't They don't like it when you do that. They don't fuck around they with that shit, man. Like also, you're a sociopath. Yes. You know, if you're trying to outrun the cops, choice of vehicle is everything. Did you see Baby Driver yet? Great movie. Did not. You did not? You really should. It's a fun movie. It's a good movie. What's the last movie I saw in the theater? It's, not, it's, it's on home video now. You can see it. It's good. Yeah. It's a good movie. I think it was either Wonder Woman or Guardians of the Galaxy. It's Kevin Spacey and John Hamm. And it, uh, it, it's good. Oh, I like John Hamm. It's good. It's a good movie. But... When you're choosing your getaway vehicle, you're wanting something snappy, something fast, something with handling, something that can... Something work. that can get away. Something that can go past 25 miles per hour. The cops were literally chasing his ass on foot and catching him. And then... You're straight... You have already... You're, you're not getting out of this. What's... What's the cop? Like, I get it. I get the idea that, like, oh, how fun. I'll steal a bulldozer and take, like, a fucking joyride and crush some shit. That sounds cool. Sounds cool. It's also really stupid. Because it's not fast. You're going to get caught. And maybe don't try to murder people. That's what we call compounding the error. Yeah. Uh, held on at least six felony counts, including attempted murder and driving under the influence of drugs. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to be in jail until your dick doesn't work anymore, <laughs> at least. Hey, he's in America. He can get a pills for that. Get those fully I, insured. I hope you're not a virgin. Because, yeah. Because by the time you get out of prison... Your dick won't work. You're going to need a fucking hydraulic lift for that thing. Yeah. I just... it. it what the... F why? Of all the... The minute... All right. Had this been me being stupid enough to do this, the minute the cops get involved, that's the point where I'm like, okay, I'm All right, done. you know what? Fun's over. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think this through. Because when you steal a bulldozer, you're getting in trouble. You yeah. are. You can take the little trouble, or you can take the big trouble. Now, the little trouble is probably a fine, maybe a lawsuit, uh, community service. It sucks, but it's the little trouble. The big trouble is six felonies. Little, like, you gotta, you gotta think critically. And even, even, even... Exactly how fucked do I want to be? Even if you're like, well, I won't even take the little trouble. Your better option was to run from the bulldozer. Yeah. Because the cops on foot 
were faster than the fucking bulldozer. Like, you got to take the bet that all their gear and the dress shoes they sometimes have to wear are going to weigh them down and <laughs> slow them down a bit. I mean, except for that they have cars that you're no longer crushing, but, you know. I, 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 from the video, I'm pretty sure he didn't even get it out of second gear. No, it was like the scene from Austin Powers. <laughs> no! no! Oh! Move out of the way! You're gonna die in like five minutes! Five minutes. <laughs> Maybe he thinks he's Deadpool, you're not Deadpool. You're not Deadpool, you're just... And, and, and to make it even better, they had to taser him and he face-planted. Here, here's his pi here, here's picture. Yeah, his face is all fucked up. Yep, that's what happens when you face plant after a taser. And, you know, they probably wouldn't have had to use the taser had you not tried to run one of them over. Yeah. That's, that is what, however you might say, we just drove at him with a bulldozer. That's still assault with a deadly weapon. What, what do you think would happen if you got him? He would squish like a little bug. Yes. Because human versus bulldozer, not great odds. Yeah, bulldozer wins. Well, bulldozer yeah. wins. That's that's unless you're dealing with like fucking Wolverine, and I'm pretty sure none of those cops were Wolverine. None of those cops were Wolverine, and you were not fictional. Deadpool. Yeah, Wolverine. They are both fictional. They yeah. Are fictional. Although now I kind of want to see them do that stunt. <laughs> I kind of want to see Deadpool run over Wolverine with a bulldozer now. You know, it Mark used to be people would steal bulldozers and 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 construction equipment to sell. Big for thievery, because those things they stay. Well, we've had a few of these idiots take them for a joyride. Yeah, I mean, normally they stay. In... Or didn't we have a guy steal one to steal an ATM? <laughs> yeah, it used to be a piece of construction equipment to steal an ATM. It used to be you had to worry about people stealing your construction equipment because they would sell it off. Now you have to worry about them stealing their equipment, your construction equipment, to do stupid shit. To go on a murder spree. I mean, Jesus Christ. You gotta low jack your bulldozer. That's that's the first thing we've learned tonight. The cops are not happy when you try to kill them. They really take it personally. They do. They're they they're not they they I mean most people would. Yeah. We've learned that uh if you, if your plan for making money includes getting yourself arrested or sodomizing yourself with children's toys maybe you should just unless you're into that maybe you should just do it on the internet yeah and then you make money yeah there are people who will pay money to watch you put the there kinder are. eggs up your ass there yeah and it's legal it's perfectly yep. legal you don't even have to leave the house. No, just have an internet connection. You could make good money that way. If that would, that was your true talent there, friend. If that's what you have to contribute to the world, then use it wisely. Yeah, that's some, that's some primetime shit. We've learned if you're going to steal a car, maybe you choose, want to... Check, choose, choose wisely. Yeah, ch check and see if there's anyone in the fucking car first. Because that's not one of those things where you can go, oh, I'm sorry, and just move on to the next car. <laughs> My bad. My bad. I didn't didn't know. Was taken. <laughs> yeah. We learned how to say fucking idiot in Japanese. We learned how to say fuck bakayaru. Bakayaru. That's that's gonna come in handy in my life. No, that's not <laughs> it's never gonna come. But you learn we learned it. Bakayaru. Um <clears throat> we've learned if you're trying to smuggle drugs, flashing lights, bad call. If you're late for your court date, committing felonies on your way there is not going to get you there any faster. Why would you bring the drugs to the court date? Why must you bring your katana and your fake police lights to your court date? Don't do that. Uh... I had to go to traffic court at one point because I had some problems with my driving status. And like, I was driving.
while my license was suspended. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't drive to traffic court on my suspended license. I got a fucking ride because I'm not an idiot. Like I was still driving to work because, you know. But I didn't drive to traffic court. I didn't <laughs> roll up in my car. We've learned that. I pretended to be a law abiding citizen. <laughs> We've learned that when it comes to Halloween decorations, context is everything. Timing. Timing. Also good. Also. And finally, we've learned that uh, if you're going to be posting uh, emergency information for hurricane victims, double check that shit before you hit send, huh? Proof it. Yeah, proof, have proof someone proof it. Yeah. Maybe call the number. Is uh, these people have already been blown once. I don't think they need that to get blown again quite they so soon. They are fucked enough. They are fucked enough. Uh, I could, could you just imagine the call center, the lunch room, at the, 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 the break room at the call center is like, I got the weirdest call today. <laughs> Me too! I think most of those people work from home. Uh, I like I to... Don't think I don't think they're all sitting there with little headsets. I like to like think they in a cubicle going, oh, yeah. I like to think they've got a water cooler. They've got a break room and they sit down and they go, can you believe the motherfucker I had this afternoon? <laughs> he wanted me to fix his roof. <laughs> Is that a thing now? Do I have to know about like roofing? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for missing the staff meetings.